It's great to be here on this wonderful stage in this wonderful arena, and I'm going to let the icon introduce us over here. <laughs> you know, uh, age has its benefits. <laughs> I'm the oldest on, well, I'm not the oldest on stage. Oh, I shouldn't oh. have said that. <laughs> I can't, actually, Can I have go back and try again? Let's try again. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for all coming out. Ken Folk is a relatively new band. We've been playing for about three years or so. During the pandemic, um, my family, this, this, this part over, uh, would get together on a weekly basis and have tunes and dinner. Uh, our kids, it's hard to call them kids now, they're all adults, um, but they were learning their instruments at the time and we got them to play so much music and um, it's something, it's a dream of ours for Peggy and I to be able to have our kids play with us and we never pushed them, we said, it's up to you, and, um, but thankfully uh, they decided to have a love for Irish music and now we're playing together as a family and it's great, so yeah, thank you. And Sam, Sam Hatch is not a family member, but we claim him as one because he's, he fits very nicely into our, um, our vibe, I guess, is the word. He wears green. He wears green, that's right. So we're going to start off with a, a set of reels. And uh, you're welcome to tap your feet and dance and whatever you'd like to do. This is St. Patrick's Month, and we're about ready to finish it up. We've been playing a lot of gigs lately, so... We're exhausted. I think we're going to take a month off. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. So I'm going to sing you a song. This is a, uh, a song about a Scottish man and a Scottish woman. And they get married, and they're, they're very happy. And then the British start a conflict with the Dutch over in the West Indies in the 17th century. The Dutch of all people, can you believe it? And uh, her husband is conscripted, he and his boat and his crew. And uh, while he's gone, he, uh, he passes away in a shipwreck, sadly. And she's heartbroken. She goes to her mother for comfort. And uh, her mother tries to convince her that there's other men out there. There's plenty of guys out there. Just go get remarried. And she refuses. She wants to stay a widow. This is called Lowlands of Holland.
There are many lands that you can away. You need not sell mountains. Oh, there is Nain in Galloway. There's Nain at all for me. For I never loved a love but one, and he's drowned in the sea. Thank you. Not all of our songs are going to be that sad, I promise. Just most of them most will be. <laughs> but the tunes are happy, so we're going to do a set of happy-sounding jigs. Uh, not all the titles are very cheerful. The second one's called The Whistler at the Wake, but, you know, even at wakes, we can be happy. So um, I'm going to be playing, and I have been playing. Uh, this is called an Anglo concertina, and um, it's one of a couple of concertina styles, I guess. There are, this is what the Irish play. And um, so something interesting about Irish traditional music is that it's still being written. And there are some tunes that we play that we don't have any idea who wrote them. They're um, traditional. And so the first one is called Liam's Bear. It was written by um, a fiddle player from Cape Breton named Jerry Holland who uh, passed away recently, and, and we're thinking it was written for a little boy named Liam, and this was about his teddy bear, but Liam, Jerry's not around for us to ask. Whistler at the Wake is traditional, and then we followed up with a tune that's either called Kevin Hughes or John Hughes, or that's another thing about Irish tunes is that a lot of them have different names and they're the same tune. It can be very confusing.
Thank you. Well, this next song is a love song. It's kind of a one-sided love song. Uh, the woman's in love with a man. She, the title of the song is I Know My Love, and she talks about how well she knows her love. She knows him by his way of walking and talking, and um, she also knows that he um, is planning to go to America someday, and probably she'll never see him again, but she still loves him, and so this is a song of undying fidelity, love of a woman for a man that is not returned. So it's like, I guess, another sad Irish song. <laughs> this features the baron that Kevin is playing over here. It's the Irish drum made from um, goat skin. Uh, there are some barons that are made from greyhound skin, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> I had no idea. Yes, retired greyhounds. Um, and uh, we also will feature the bazooki over here that uh, our icon is playing. <laughs> okay, we need to stop that right now. You were right there with me the whole time, so you must be the iconist. I am the iconist. The iconist. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Here we go. Hold on, I don't play concertina on this. I just realized. <laughs> <laughs> I play fiddle on this one. I'm ready now. Here we go. I know my love by his way of walking, and I know my love by his way of talking, and I know my love just in a suit of blue. And if I don't ask me, what will I do? And still she cried. I love him the best, and a trouble my shirt can no more rest. And still she cried. Bonnie boards of you, and if I don't ask me, what will I do? Pocus. We love pokas. It's just so much fun to watch people dance to them. And uh, there's one part of Ireland uh, where a lot of the pokas and slides of Ireland come from. It's called the Sleeve Lucra area. 
and it's a, a kind of a meeting of a number of different counties in Ireland, and I can't remember all of them. It's Kerry and Cork and Limerick and others. But anyway, there's that one area, it just a lot of written music, uh, polkas and slides. And not pe many people realize that there's some wonderful polkas there. Everybody thinks of, you know, Czech polkas and German polkas, but um, in Ireland they, have, they love them too. There's a great dancing to them. So we're gonna play three of them. The first one we learned, um, from a great fiddle player that used to live around here named David Mahalko, and uh, called the Blue Ocean. And then we followed up with one called the Wexford, uh, which we learned from Claire Kaysen. Many of you might know her. She's uh, also very involved in the Irish music community and works with the North Texas School of Irish Music, which uh, part of time started in the very beginning of that school. And then um, we finished up with one called Kelly's. It's actually written by a um, player by the name of Ned Kelly, and it was we learned it from Donald Murphy of the Sleeve Notes group. So three polkas. <laughs> Tell you, it's really this is different for us. We play a lot of pubs, and it's usually a lot of noise and people screaming for beer, and <laughs> and this beer. is just scary. It's usually me. We can't see you, 
So we have no what you we don't know what you look like. We don't know if you're drinking beer or not. We don't. <laughs> if someone wants pretty to, sure you aren't. Someone wants to fight with their boyfriend on FaceTime. We feel a lot more comfortable. Yes, with really. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to sing a song if I'm ready for that, which I'm not. So I will talk while I'm tuning. Or we can talk about it for you. No, I prefer I do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've heard what you've said before about my songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to happen out there, not up here. This is why our daughter is sitting between us, because yeah, really. she's we were, the peacemaker in the family. We were this close to being called family therapy instead of kinfolk. <laughs> it wouldn't have worked. So anyway, this song is called Welcome Patty Home. It's a, the story goes like this. Um, back in the, the famine... There wasn't any work for many of the uh, Irish men, so they would go off into various parts of the world to work and, of course, try to send money back to their families. Uh, in this particular case, uh, and often, oftentimes, they would go leaving to find work. They'd end up going to the America, United States, or Canada, or Australia, or, or even England, for all crazy as that sounds, and sometimes they never came back. And sometimes when they did come back, they came back in coffins. If you made it in America, the great hope and dream would be to, to send your coffin back to Ireland for burial. But this particular song um, is a happy in one sense in that the, the Irishman comes back. The problem is um, the British would confiscate your land and your property if you, were, if you left your homeland. And so he comes back to find out that everything had been taken from him. Now, in Ireland, too, you could not really openly say anything about the British or negative about the British. So they would always uh, use metaphors and, and other means of explaining who the British are in, in the particular story. So in this particular case, it's called The Stranger. That's who the British are. You probably figured it out, but I'm telling you now. So this is out of tune. It's played traditionally out of tune, so I just want you to know. I am a true born Irishman, I'll never deny what I am. I was born a sweet Tipperary boys, two thousand miles away. Hooray, my boys, hooray, no more do I wish for to roam. The sun will shine a harvest time. To welcome poor Paddy home. Now the girls, they're young and frisky. They will take you by the hand. Saying, Jimmy McCree, won't you come with me and welcome poor Paddy home? Hooray, my boys, hooray. No more do I wish for to go. The sun will shine in the harvest sun to welcome poor Paddy home. And in came the far stranger and settled on. The horse and the cow, the goat and the sow, fell into the stranger's hand. Array, my boys, array. No more do I wish for to go. The sun that will shine on the harvest time to welcome poor Paddy home. Now the Scotsman can boast of the thistle. The Englishman can boast of the rose, but Paddy can boast of the emerald isle where the dear little shamrock grows. Array, my boy, survey. No more do I wish for to go. The sun will shine in 
the harvest time to welcome poor Patty home. Hooray, my boys, hooray. No more do I wish for to roam. The sun that will shine in the harvest time to welcome poor Patty home. Thank you. I did, there was an extra part to the story that I didn't tell in the first part and I should have. Um, oh no. <laughs> I'll tell this one. Yeah, please. So when the kids were babies, um, he would rock them to sleep and sing this song. Which is why we have so many emotional and mental problems now. <laughs> We're terrified of the British taking our kids. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a special song for us. Um, we're not going to do some slides. Slides are, uh, as I mentioned, at Sleeve Luca area. This is uh, slides we like to say are jigs on steroids. They are just fast, and it's fun to watch the dancers dance them. And we particularly enjoy it because it's about the only set of tunes that we can play where we wear out the dancers before we wear out. Uh, so we'll play three slides for you. Uh, the Cooley slide we uh, learned uh, from Claire Clay's Kaysen. Uh, Star Above the Garter is a really popular tune that uh, I have no idea where we learned it from. And then O'Keefe's, I think we learned this from um, a great fiddle player by the name of um, Matt Cranich, who, by the way, is teaching at the O'Flaherty Irish Music Retreat. And I'll give you oh more boy, details plug. on that <laughs> later. <plug>. What a <laughs> segue. <laughs> and you too can learn some. Thank you. 
Well, I just discovered something about the concertina. Do I ever put it away with the bellows out? Because it gets stuck. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm going to play, um, we're going to play a set, of, a set of tunes. Smorgasbord of tunes. Sorry. My set list keeps disappearing on my phone. We're going to play a set of um, tunes. First is an air called The Mountains of Pomeroy. And this is a, actually, it's a song that has lyrics to it. Um, but we're just going to play the tune. And it's a, a really lovely air. And then we brighten things up a little bit with um, a reel called Galen's Arrival, again about the birth of a, uh, a son to the Scottish fiddle player Alistair Fraser. And then we end with a jig called Calvies. By the way, we dedicate this to our uh, nephew. He's been uh, suffering with a, a mixture of both a brain injury and also um, um, Lyme disease, which has been awful because both are fighting against each other, and so he's for eight years now, I guess, has been suffering with this terrible, uh, awful thing. So we dedicate this to him because he really likes Irish music, and uh, again, this is being streamed. Hopefully, you'll you'll hear about it because we, we dedicate it every time we play it. Yeah, Kevin just picked up another instrument called the low whistle. It's really difficult to tune. You got to warm it up. Should be no problem with all the lights on us, right? <laughs> I'll just hold it like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? Yes. No, I'm talking to him over here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't come in until the second time, so you're good. I, yeah.
Thank you. So we're here to uh, talk a little bit about uh, traditional Irish music and also take any questions. Uh, we're representing uh, an organization called the Traditional Irish Music Education Society. Uh, it's an organization that was founded in 2004, a year after we uh, had a, a camp called the O'Flaherty Irish Music Retreat. Uh, we were a little surprised at how big it got, and we ended up having to move it quickly from Spring Hill Retreat Center in Richardson to uh, a wonderful camp down in Midlothian called the Hoblet Cell Camp and Conference Center, which we now take over the entire thing because we have about 300 students and we have faculty of 24, uh, half of them from Ireland and the other half, uh, some of the great players here in the United States and Canada. And uh, we do this in October. And for those of you that might be interested in learning traditional Irish music, it's never too old to start. We have people who are starting in their 80s um, and then we also have some young ones who come, uh, teenagers, that uh, they're vetted. They have to be um, quite committed to uh, playing Irish music before we let them come because it's obviously an adult camp mostly. Uh, it's three days in October, uh, and it's going to be a fantastic year. We have a great lineup. But this is going to be the 24th year of the retreat, so it's kind of exciting for us that we've lasted this long. And um, anyway, from that retreat, we determined that we need to have an organization to help support it, a nonprofit, uh, and we formed the Traditional Irish Music Education Society. And it's now become an international organization because of the internet. Um, the camp has become an internationally recognized camp. We also have a youth camp that we do in June. So if you have children or grandchildren between the ages of six and 18, we have a place for them uh, a couple days in June. And it's, um, it became important, I think, to a lot of people, particularly during the pandemic, uh, because there were very little opportunities for people to interact and learn. So we did online sessions, we did online instruction, and we did a, one of our camps online. It was a, a wonderful success, but probably the hardest work that we've ever done. Uh, you'd think that doing an in-person event would be much harder, but when you had as many classes, we had uh, film crews in Ireland and the United States doing all the video uh, capture of all the lessons, and then we did concerts that were done virtually, and it was just an amazing thing. We had almost 45 people involved in trying to make it happen. Um, so thankful that the pandemic is over, so we don't have to do that again. Um, we can debate whether the pandemic's over, I understand, but I'm... Not, not on this stage. Not on this stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, we're glad that we're back uh, doing things as we have done. Uh, anyway, all that to say, we are also connected with the Southwest Celtic Music Association, um, my wife and I are, are co-founders uh, with two others from the SMA and also North Texas Irish Festival. So we have a tremendous history in the area in terms of Irish music. Uh, so with that said, I just want to introduce the band real quickly and then we'll take questions. So at the very end, we have my son, Kevin Fleming, on the boron, the whistle, and the flute. We have my wife, Peggy Fleming, not the famous skater, uh, plays fiddle and the concertina. And then we have my daughter, Katie, who plays banjo and mandolin. She is also Katie Duncan now because she's married to our sound man who, he's down here, Patrick Duncan. Not today's sound. Not, not, today's sound not today, he's not doing sound today. But, um, he deserve an applause, people. And okay. something worthy of applause is that Katie is pregnant with our first grandchild. <laughs> she's due in June, but we told her she can't be pregnant or done delivered until after the youth camp. So I am the Pater Familias, I am Ken, and then we have Sam Hatch, who is really, we consider him a member of the family, so Sam Hatch on guitar. So we'll be happy to take uh, questions, and if you don't have any questions, we'll just play music, but it, we're here to uh, help answer anything that you might like to ask. <coughs> How often do we play or perform or rehearse or what? Yes, that yes. was the question. Oh. Thank you so much. Okay. For, for one thing, thank you for coming out. Thank you. We love your music. Y'all are very talented, and we, we don't take your presence here for granted. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Um, how often do you uh, get together to practice to sound this good? How do you do it? Okay. Well, as I mentioned, when we were in the pandemic, we meet weekly. We still meet weekly for, for tunes and dinner. It's something that's become a family tradition for us. And as I said, Sam's part of the family now, so he's part of that. 
sometimes we take off. Uh, this month, we've played probably played two dozen gigs, and we're tired. <laughs> <laughs> so we might take a month off or something, or time off, but we'll probably still rehearse every week. We love getting together and having dinner, so it's great when we can play music and also have dinner. So food and music are two important things for the Fleming family. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions? You're too easy. Well, anybody else? I can't tell if anybody's raising their hand or not. <laughs> I'm assuming you've been to Scotland and or Ireland, or could you tell us about that if you have? Yes, we've been to Ireland. We haven't been to, Peggy's been to Scotland, I believe. I was in Scotland, yeah. Uh, it was a trip that uh, included me. I was with some friends. We went to Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and uh, England. And then Ken and I went back to Ireland for our honeymoon uh, a few years later. And then the whole family went uh, in 2015 to Ireland. And uh, we love Ireland, it's a very welcoming place. Um, and we play the music, so that's always a pleasant surprise for them. And we've been welcomed into sessions there. So it's been Funny a story time. about our, our trip there. We, we, we first went there on honeymoon, we, we were called the honeymooners. <laughs> and that spread all over Ireland. By the time we ended up in the city, we would, they'd be knowing, you, are you the, Isle, uh, the, the honeymooners from Dallas? <laughs> and this was during the time that Dallas was the most popular TV show in Ireland, and they all asked us if we had an oil well, did we have cows, I mean, it was, it was fun. It's a very small place, so the word gets around. It's amazing how, how fast rumors spread. <laughs> <laughs> we took advantage of it, though. We didn't, we didn't pay for a beer the entire time, I don't think. No, not. But Ireland's a great place. I, I, for me, it's, um, it, it, the, because we're, the music's so important, it's just, that's paradise musically, I mean, for us. And when we were there on our honeymoon, we didn't know all the tunes that we know now. So when we went last time with the kids, we, we were, Pig and I just were able to play most of the music that we heard, and it was just wonderful to be able to contribute and participate that way. And the kids, we were all set to do it again this year, and then somebody got pregnant. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Yeah. <laughs> he held over their grandchild's head for the rest of his life. No, we won't do that. Any other questions? Again? Sure. Okay. So the uh, what I'm playing is called a button accordion, and no surprise, it has nothing but buttons. Uh, it's common common instrument in Ireland. Um, most of the players who play accordion play button accordion as a tradition. Piano accordion is also very popular. You see that more in, in uh, some of the dances, the flacchioles, or not the flacchioles, but the feshes. You see a lot of the performers play <laughs> piano accordion, but Irish. Most of the traditional players play button accordion. Uh, Peggy plays the Anglo concertina. And there's different varieties. The two main varieties that are common in, in, the, in British, Celtic, Irish, and all that is the English concertina, which has the same note is played when you push or pull on a particular button. For some reason, the Irish chose the hardest of the concertinas to play because it's a different note for every single pull or push. So, same button. And uh, so it's a diatonic instrument, which scared me away from playing it for the longest time. But uh, I, during the pan, this was my pandemic project, and because you know, it, it needed that much time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I play also an Irish bazooki. Of course, you're not you're familiar with guitars, um, but we have a. This is a, an Irish bazooki. The typical Greek bazooki has three sets of strings. This has four sets. And it's tuned much like a fiddle, except the last string is instead of an E, it's a D. So it has a different flavor than, than some of the other instruments. Katie was playing the mandolin, which is quite familiar. But she plays more of a traditional style, which is the A model side, which is kind of the round hole and makes it a little bit warmer than you see in some mandolins. And she plays the Irish tenor banjo, which is unlike the American version, even though it's just a tuning difference. Uh, the banjo is tuned like the fiddle, just an octave lower. And then it has four strings instead of yeah five. four strings instead of five strings like you commonly see, and then Kevin he's playing the Irish flute which is uh, it's a uh, if if we were to go back in time to the 1800s early 1800s and you saw an orchestra play Bach let's say or whatever they'd be playing this kind of flute uh, it's not a metal flute it's all wood and that's the traditional style for for Irish players 
And then he also has a, a whole bunch of different whistles, and you can tell him what those are. Yeah, we have the uh, uh, C tin whistle. They come in different keys, so you can play them more easily for depending on what type of tune you're playing. This is the C. I have a D back in the dressing room. And uh, here we have the, the low D whistle, which is very beautiful and very, uh, uh, well, it's a low. <laughs> it's a low <laughs> D whistle. And the, the fingers are further apart because obviously it's a larger instrument to make it that low D compared to the higher instrument, which is the tin whistle. I think, that's, I think that's all of the instruments. Yeah, we have a lot of instruments. We usually cause sound men a lot of trouble when we show up. Go ahead. Any other questions? So a tin whistle would be one octave higher than that. Any other questions? All right then. Oh, is this one? False alarm. <laughs> okay, no. okay. I, uh, I'm just curious if it's a C or a B flat wooden flute, because I was given one as a child from my grandfather who thought he was buying me one for the little middle school band, and, and it had no keys, it had just holes, and it was a B flat, so is yours C or? Regular flute? Uh, this is a D flute. And like you, you observed, this is an open hole D flute, except for the keys, which provide the half steps that I usually need for things with uh, G or F naturals or G sharps or anything like that in the tune. But you're, you're right on. A lot of the flutes that uh, particularly really great players, they'll play with just six holes. Yeah. And they do half holing, which will put their finger on a hole, half of a hole to make a flat or a sharp. It's really interesting. Um, but we're lazy. <laughs> That's too much work. Can we hear a few licks from the tin whistle? Sure. I was played in the wrong key, too. Oh. <laughs> As you were going to the B part, you recognized that, huh? <laughs> that was the wrong whistle. Yeah, one of the things, too, about the whistle and also the flute, you don't hear a lot of tonguing, which is very American style in terms of playing. They don't tongue in Ireland. What they use is they do ornamentation. You might have heard of him doing some rolls, and that causes some of the effect. But tonguing is really rare in an Irish music, much like it's, it's meant to kind of follow the illin pipes. And the Elam pipes, there's a lot of flowing sound coming out of the pipes, and likewise, that's what happens in the flute and whistle. If you know how to play it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and tongue means? Uh, that's stopping the airflow into the instrument with your tongue. So basically, like that. For uh, the flute specifically, you also, uh, I forgot what you call it, but basically you stop the airflow with your throat to, uh, yeah, okay. exactly. All right. Okay. Here for this question's for Sam. Um, I was curious what your musical background is um, prior to getting involved with the Irish here. Has it always been Irish, or did you play in a garage band? Or did, you so know, we don't or, let him speak. Guitar hero. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Essentially, no other musical groups. I was self-taught on most of the instruments that I know. I like to play around on everything from piano to accordions to violins to brass instruments. I just like everything. I uh, got involved with the School of Irish Music that he mentioned earlier. That gave me the basic beginning to Irish music, and then I began playing at this level. Also, some people want to know what he, he doesn't play a standard tuning guitar I do, which is if you, most standard guitar players know what I'm talking about. He plays in a thing called double drop D. It's, there's all different kinds of tunings in Irish music, uh, dad, gad, drop D, and he plays double drop D. So. It's uh, just to give a lot of that drone 
a lot of drone in Irish music. And like the pipes, when they play a D drone, they'll play all kinds of tunes in the D drone. His tuning allows for that, which makes it really fun for him to play behind Irish music. Anybody else? Oh, the boron. Yeah. Yes, this is a, a tunable model, so it has these little wheels along the, the edge of it. Uh, my very first boron that I started playing when I was 10, 8, <laughs> it was bigger than me. Yeah. You had to tune it by going into the restroom at the pub and filling it full of water <laughs> until the, it loosened the uh, goat skin enough that I could actually play it. And it's much nicer to have something like this. Uh, this is a drum that was made by Albert Alfonso, who's a, a local boron maker and actually a, an old bandmate of my parents. He's been around for a really long time. He's a, a great, uh, great boron maker. But uh, just to give you a, a rough overview, it is played vertically like this, as opposed to a, a normal drum set. And then you play it with a double-sided drumstick called a tipper. And this one is a brushed tipper, so it gives a nice little effect whenever you hit it with the brush side. And to get different tones, you just press your hand further in or slide it around the drum. So you can get higher tones like this and then all the way down. So I basically have a full drum set without the cymbals all in one drum, which is something I brag about a lot to people <laughs> who have to set up drum sets. <laughs> A lot of fun to play. Anybody else? Well, thank you. Those are all great questions. Um, yeah. We were expecting much harder questions. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and uh, play some Irish music for you. Uh, this first set of jigs um, is my daughter's favorite set of jigs. So, of course, we're going to honor her by doing them, obviously. So. The first one, we, it's called the Dara Patrick set, or we call it the set Dara Patrick set. Dara Patrick jig, followed by Waylands, and then we finish up with one called the uh, Old Walls of Limerick. Liz Carroll. Liz Carroll. I heard there's old walls in Limerick, too. Is there? Absolutely. Yeah, we have to do a little tuning. We, this light kind of really changes it. Yeah. Good enough. Okay. <laughs>
I'm going to sing a song that's kind of a contemporary song um, because it talks about the urban renewal in Dublin and is uh, sung by a man who is not happy about it. So he wishes for um, the old days in Dublin when before the skyscrapers and um, all the modern um, buildings are going up and everything's changing and and life isn't good for this man at all. And uh, so <laughs> um, it's another sad song, what can I say? He's lost his job because he was a barrel maker, Cooper. He lost that job and uh, he lost his house and uh, his girlfriend ran off with somebody. So there's nothing left for this man. So uh, at the end of it, uh, we do a, a lovely tune to kind of make up for how sad this song is. It's called um, Rare Old Times. It starts with a mandolin tuning. It's a very interesting. It was in tune when I tuned it yesterday. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I like that. <laughs> oh, I'm using that from now hey, Can we use that? Can we use that? That's great. We say that about everything else. You know, she's eating for two. She's driving for two. She's, she's playing for two. on songs and stories Heroes of renown The passing tales and glories That once was Dublin town The hallowed halls and houses The haunting children's rhymes That once was part of Dublin In the if you want to join the next time around. My name it is Sean Dempsey As Dublin as can be Born hard and late in Pimlico In a house that ceased to be By trade I was a cooper Lost out to redundancy Like my house that fell to progress my trades are men on Ring the ring the rosy as the light divides. I remember Dublin City in the rare old times. And I courted Peggy Dean as pretty as you please. A rogue and a child. Mary from the rebel liberties. I lost her to a student chap when I was on the dole. When he took her off to Birmingham, he took away my soul. Bring the ring a rosy as the light declines. I remember Dublin City in the rare old times. have made me bitter 
sing a song. It's all yours, Kevin. Okay. It's finally a happy Irish song. <laughs> it's a, uh, I mean, I wouldn't call it a, a happy Irish song. It's not a sad hi Irish song. It's just a, a guy who describes the directions that a woman takes to get home. He actually listing the ways in which she doesn't go home. So he goes, she doesn't go along the shore and these are the reasons why. She doesn't go along the glen. These are the reasons why. She has to go home by Barna. And I'm not entirely sure what Barna is. Is it a, it's a village? It's a village. Okay, so instead of going through fields and valleys and things like that, she just goes through the, the village of Barna. I just wish there were a more exciting story behind it. I wish you would too, because I'm still tuning. <laughs> so uh, Barna is a, 
village. <laughs> and in the village, there was a little bunny rabbit. It's a very interesting story. He tells a story about a woman who, uh, after mass on Sunday, she goes and gets a drink and then goes home. Through Barnum. Yeah, and nothing terrible happens. Nobody dies. They're not mourning anyone. It has nothing to do with the British, which is shocking. I can provide a little insight about giving directions in Ireland or receiving directions in Ireland. When you ask for directions in Ireland, if anybody ever goes or has been, it's a big debate. There's more than one person at you is there. There's a debate about the best way you should go. And I have actually asked for directions and left them arguing <laughs> about the best way I should have gone. But the best directions I ever got were, turn right at the donkey that's tethered at the top of the road. I said, what if the donkey isn't there? And said, the donkey will be there. <laughs> was the donkey there? The donkey was there. All right. Anyway, I'm tuned now. <laughs> you learned a lot, didn't you? Uh, this is actually, we got these from the great, uh, the Black Brothers. The Black family is one of the most famous singing families in Ireland. Uh, consisting of Shea Black, Michael Black, Mary Black, and one other black I can't remember. Anyway, these are from the, the Shea and Michael Black uh, off of the CD they did. It's a wonderful, wonderful song. In Scarta Glen there lived a lass and every Sunday after mass she would go and take a glass before going home by Barna. We won't go home along the road for fear that you might act the road. Won't go home along the road but we'll go home by Barna. We won't go home along the shore for fear we be the country war. Won't go home along the shore but we'll go home by Barna. We won't go home around the glen for fear that she might rise again. Won't go home around the glen, but we'll go home by Barna. We won't go down the Melpharine, the night is bright, we might be seen. We won't go down the Melpharine, but we'll go home to Barna. We won't go home across the bog, for fear we might be Kearney's dog. Won't go home across the dog, but we'll go home by Barna. We won't go home along the strand, we might disturb the fairy band. We won't go home along the strand, but we'll go home to Barna. We won't go home across the fields, the big thornings could stick our heels. Won't go home across the fields, but we'll go home by Barna. We won't go home across the fields, the big thornings could stick our heels. Won't go home across the fields, but we'll go home by Barna. So if you need to learn how to go to Barna, now you know. So I think we're gonna do another song. Oh, let's do a, let's do hornpipes first. Okay. Okay. So we we try to play as much variety in traditional music as possible. There's so many different kinds of tunes, and if you know anything about traditional music, it's it's almost all dance music. Um, so we're gonna play some hornpipes. There's different kinds of hornpipes. There's soft shoe, hard shoe. They have different speeds. It can be very confusing. Slip jigs, there's reels, double jigs, hop jigs, there's um, slides, uh, strathspeys, a lot of different things that you can do. Flings, um, waltzes, and we'll do a lot of them in our show just to kind of give people a variety of what the traditional music sounds like in Ireland. So here's some hornpipes. The first one, um, it has one of the nicest, longest names of a tune. No, it's not. I'm sorry. Forget that. Forget that. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of the wrong thing. Uh, this is a, a tune called Queen of the West. There are no queens in Ireland, so I'm sure this was a joke. 
Um, so Queen of the West, and then the second one was written by a, a good friend of ours, a piano accordion player by the name of Jimmy Keene out of Chicago. And he wrote this for his dad. His dad was a big man, and he was a steel worker in Chicago. And they named him the horse. That's what his, uh, his, his uh, fellow colleagues would call him. So he named it Horse Keen, the second one. Thank you. Oh, I'm singing a song. <laughs> I'm going to be singing a song that's uh, a love song. No one dies, no one breaks up, gets divorced, or it's just about a, a guy who, who uh, <laughs> leaves whenever there's bad weather. In Ireland, so he leaves basically every day <laughs> and then comes back. Um, but he goes to his true love's house and spends time with her, and then as soon as looks like it's going to storm, he mounts his steed and he, he leaves. So I, uh, I always dedicate the song to my husband for sticking by me 
during the biggest storm of our marriage, which was me learning banjo. So, <laughs> this is um, it's called the night visiting song. And do I need to say anything else about it? No. Okay. <laughs> We'll soon find out if you're in the wrong key. <laughs> That'll be embarrassing for me. <laughs> Just make sure you get the tempo right. We're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> finish up, uh, we give you kind of a little smorgasbord of um, Irish music. We're going to do a, a really pretty waltz that I, I learned um, at the Catskills that I, I learned from a box player by the name of Patty O'Brien. I'm not sure if Patty wrote this or he just uh, taught it to us, but it's a, a lovely waltz, kind of a haunting waltz, and it kind of tells the tale of Ireland's woes over the many, many generations of uh, dealing with uh, British oppression and just the difficulties they've had and Thank God there was finally a, a resolution to that uh, when the uh, Republic of Ireland finally came into being and uh, everything is, seems to be, everybody seems to be playing nice at the moment, which is really great. Uh, the second one is a, is a jig that we learned from a great fiddle player by the name of Bree Harper, who happened to be one of our teachers uh, this year at the O'Flaherty Retreat and um, learned it from her. And it's called um, 
the field fair, which I guess is a, a was a field the field fair is a is a particular bird or something I think. And then the last one is a real. It's called um, Joe Cooley's Morning Dew. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for being a great audience. We appreciate it. Uh, we do play around here locally. We play at the various places. We play at the Gillespie's Tavern on the Shire in Richardson. We play at the Celt Irish Pub in McKinney. And of course, we play at all kinds of festivals. And we do private gigs, weddings, wakes. You name it, we'll do it. OK. <laughs> And a big round of applause for the crew that put all this together. Yes, for, uh, thank you so much. Library. Thank you, our sound crew up there. Appreciate it. This is a wonderful place to play. It really is. A little intimidating, but it's a nice place to play. And by the way, the snacks were great. <laughs> Don't want to forget that. Whoever provided the snacks. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all.